it started with a game. If everyone would like just bag the noise, okay, like we could do this. Sonny, name one thing that's gotten better in the last 10 years. Shall we play a game? Video games. All right, I acknowledge that. Totally awesome video game! <laughs> Game writing 101. Um, I want to kick this video off as so many of my videos have and will, but with a uh, an apology of sorts. Uh, this is the we're going to work with my dry erase board today. That's going to be very important. We are in this phase of uh, the process, the simple hands on process. Not the only process, not the easiest, or not, not the only process, not necessarily the best process, but a simple process to get you up and running. Uh, and this phase is, is the narrative design. It's, it's what I said. It's kind of where the rubber hits the road. It's all great to talk about narrative and interactivity and using gameplay to tell the story. It's, it's um, but this how, precisely how, how, where, and when. Are you going to tell a story? We've been working with my example, and my example is um, a simple one. My the, the, my the, uh, the story that I've been taking you through is a simple one. It's like a single-player experience <clears throat> for a first-person shooter of sorts. Um, it's based on uh, King Midas. So if you know the story of King Midas, you've been following along in class, paying attention. If you haven't been sleeping in the back of the room... Uh, it, you, you know that we are sort of telling the sequel to King Midas. We're picking up uh, many years after he accidentally turned his only child, a daughter, in, in, our, in, our, in my story, she's, she's a young adult, <clears throat> into gold. She's essentially a gold statue. And we're picking up at the, at the close to the end of his life, he's very old and in ill health. He can still turn things to gold, but he has been um, spending all of his time and all of his gold trying to reverse the effects of his Midas touch. That is, when he turns things to gold, he wants the power to be able to turn them back to their original state, whatever it is. Dionysus is the key. Dionysus gave him the power to turn things into gold. But Dionysus hasn't been seen in the neighborhood, so to speak, for a very long time. So he spends his day just brooding and wallowing in shame and guilt and staring at the statue of his daughter and hoping that his scouts and his spies will report back to him that, that they found Dionysus, that Dionysus has made another appearance. So as usual, I've got my notes. I'm going to be working off, and I'm going to be working off this dry board. And this is the best angle I could I could get. Believe it or not, I have a couple tripods. I, I, I did my best. I, the best I can do, I think, is sit in this chair. Yeah, that's closer. Sit in this chair. And work on the, the dry erase board. Um, and hopefully it won't be too awkward. Um, it, it's, it's really the best I could do. And it's, it's, not, it's, it's going to take us a little bit of time. I have to break this up maybe into two videos or more. We'll see. Okay. But, you know, you, you can pause this whenever you want to take a break and pick up where you left off you know, whatever, whatever works. Um, essentially, what we're going to do now is take that story treatment that we worked on. And of course, we're thinking about the characters, thinking about the gameplay, thinking about, you know, what message, you know, yeah, that we might have, what theme might be important to us. Um, but we're going to, we're going to flow, basically create a flow chart of the game. Okay, and when we're done, check this out, everybody. When we're done, 
my particular flow chart for this game is going to look like this. This is kind of the finished product. But I want you to focus on this right now. We're going to do this together. But I do want you to notice one, to, to notice the one thing here. You see how this is color-coded? I'm using a back scratcher. That's all I... I don't have a... I don't have a... Like a professional looking pointer thing. Um, <clears throat> it's color coded. I've got red for cinemas, really not interactive, but maybe key points in the story that can't be missed and are difficult to animate. When we're done with our flow chart, we don't want to see a lot of red. I realize I kind of have a lot of red, but I think it's because, you know, I was a little, like, um, uneven with the sizes of the boxes. It's a little misleading. I, I started off writing small. I didn't know how much space I would take up. There's no significance to the size of the boxes in this flow chart. It's just it's trying to make everything fit. You know, green is uh, our one of our uh, primary gameplay you know, features because this is a first person shooter of sorts so I'll you know explain I've explained talk about that a little bit I'll explain some more brown is more is some kind of puzzle probably a physics physics based environmental puzzle but there'll be other puzzles as well these are broad strokes that we're painting with a blue is some kind of interaction and mostly I think it's an NPC interaction that might have branching dialogue branching sort of conversations the player can guide things make some choices even while interacting with an NPC. Orange is really just exploration. Now we're not I'm not adding every single moment the player has to explore an environment, no. But key moments of exploration um, are noted here. This is a flowchart of the uh, of of the of the game of all the sort of uh, major sequences of the game and it's somewhat high level and it's a flow chart so you can only put so much detail on a flow chart the next step when we're done with this will be the walkthrough extremely important although this is where the heavy lifting is done the walkthrough will expand on all of this a great deal but this is where kind of the heavy lifting is done and before we have our finished product right we're just you know Looking at, we just got a blank canvas. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to use do use a whiteboard to do this. You can do this in Excel. I actually think Excel is, 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 is yes. There's all kinds of fancy flowchart programs, but they usually you spend so much time messing around with boxes and arrows. You can use a flowchart or a Excel or a Google Sheet and color code the cells. In fact, that that's what I did first, and then I threw it up here. For your sake. But when we're working in a collaborative environment, this is often what I do. We get into a conference room, and we've got artists and pro gameplay programmers and producers and <coughs> other people. And I am uh, guiding this process. It's a collaborative effort. And it's fun. It's Saturday night. I'm filming this Saturday night. I'm betting you're not watching Saturday night. If you're watching this at all, I'll bet you it's not Saturday night. It's fun. You, it, it, you can have fits and starts, even with even with a group, even when the energy is good. You, you, you can hit, you know, you can hit a wall sometimes. But you keep working and keep working, and and it gets fun. You, you, you start making connections. And you start even thinking about the characters even, you know, even more. And uh, even, even even you know more deeply, and and it's just, it's a, it's a fun process. And 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 this is what, you know, makes games kind of so different. So, let's let's just get into it, like everything else. Let's dive in head first, in the shallow end, no helmet. Uh, <laughs> what I was taught was to actually start at the ending. That's why we, one of the reasons why we have that treatment, right? We know how it ends. We know where we want the story to go. If we know where we want the story to go, we can work backwards from there all the way to the beginning. It's Saturday, right? I'm the cool teacher. You can, you can drink, you can drink whatever you want, you know, beer, wine, soda, 
snacks. I don't have any snacks. You should <coughs> usually have snacks. For the snacks are important. I know I look like the type of guy that would have snacks. I just don't have snacks. Okay. Um, what happens at the very end? I've, I've talked about it before. At the very end of this story, King Midas finally is able to use this newfound power of changing things from gold back to their original state to save his daughter, to basically uh, return her to her human form from a gold statue. She's, she's a young adult at this point, not a girl, young, a young adult. And he's, and he's on death's door when he does it. So it's close. When he dies, the, the cure dies with him. But he's just able to do it. And in his last moments of life, he's able to just kind of reconcile and tell her that he loves her and, and they're, they're able to have this great moment before he dies. He loses his life, but he gains his soul back. That's the very end. Now, it's going to be this great, you know, moment. It's the very end of the game. I think we're okay to have a... Uh, I'll do this here. I just want to make sure. A... Uh, A good old-fashioned cinema, right? We don't love non-interactive cinemas and games, but sometimes it's okay. And again, I'm keeping things simple for, for this introductory course and this process. Once you get this process down and you practice it, you'll be able to do all kinds of stuff. Okay? So, the question we ask ourselves is, in order to get to my closing ending cinema, what has to happen immediately before that? What has to happen? Well, he has to actually... use his power to return his daughter to human form. So I'm going to make that a little bit of a puzzle. It's going to be super easy, almost not really a puzzle, because uh, it's the end of the game. He's, he, the player's going to have done all this stuff. This is just kind of letting them, I think it's important to let them, the player, do it themselves. It'll have more impact, more emotional impact. You could potentially make this part of the cinema, but I, we want the player, right? We want the player to have that moment where they turn uh, King Midas' daughter back to a human form. So, um, you know, now, again, it's a flow chart we're kind of writing in shorthand, sort of. We, we, we know our story well at this point. Um, and we're going to do a walkthrough that's going to, you know, expand on all these moments in greater detail. Um, but we're not there yet, right? We're, we're still, you know, we are trying to map out this game. Well, what has to happen before, you know, the player is able to to actually cure King Midas' young adult daughter? Well, Midas is going to have to best... Sort of the boss of the, 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 the game. There's going to be a boss fight. I'm using the term loosely. Against this character I've spoken about. Prince of Thieves. I'm, I'm using that term, you know, loosely as well. He's it's basically like a pirate captain. And it's interesting, you know, it, I talked about how, you know, because you've thought about your characters, right? You put in a little bit of time. That was our last video. And it's interesting to me how... King Midas might see himself in this character. This King Midas was obviously driven by greed as a young king. That's how he got into this scenario. And this pirate captain stole the statue. And I think he, he, he could be a young guy driven by greed. King Midas is a proper 
king, or at least he was at one point. This guy is a prince of thieves, a pirate prince, and I'm using prince loosely. So there's some parallels there, which I think will be really interesting. But anyway, prior to him uh, curing his daughter, he's got to um, get past this pirate captain who stole the statue. There's going to be a boss fight. Of course there's going to be a boss fight. I think it's going to be a little different in that... I see them, like, fighting, and I see King Midas sort of besting him, not killing him, maybe not even really hurting him, but besting him. And maybe he's mortally wounded, or maybe it's just because, as we've said, he's in ill health, and he's, you know, been, you know, exerting himself to, to, to an extreme. But, uh... I think they all. He also sort of reaches some sort of an accord with this pirate thief, or if not an accord, it's like you know you, they're fighting each other. King Midas, King Midas bests him, and uh, and maybe at the last moment, uh, the pirate captain sort of gets what's going on, get or gets it, or gets it. That this isn't just a fight over gold something at more at play here and so maybe while he is bested maybe he also sort of stands down a little bit um you know i'm gonna work on that and think i got a little i got a little time still but um oops i already made my already <laughs> already made a mistake here that this is uh what i want here is Actually, no, that was fine. Um, I think there's, there's going to be a boss battle, but and, and there's going to be like a brief, a brief cinema in which we show how the pirate thief is maybe um, neutralized, incapacitated, also maybe decides to kind of stop fighting as also. Which I'm not talking into the microphone, so... So we've got a uh, boss fight, right after that, a brief cinema where Midas is victorious and the pirate thief maybe stands down a little bit. But the boss fight is in green. It's, it's, a, it's action, it's fighting, it's combat. It's the, the first person shooter of sorts. What it is is that Midas in our game can shoot orbs from one hand and turn something to gold. And with the other hand, he can shoot this, shoot those same things, turn, the, turn those objects back to their original state, whatever it was. So it'll be useful for combat, but also for puzzle solving. Okay. Um, what happens before the boss fight? Well... I've had some time, you know, to think about this, right? And I think what it is, is, uh, or, you know, and, and this will be made clear in a little bit, but what happens here is Midas re has just recovered the statue. But then it's the boss, you know, the boss is always the last sort of, the last enemy that you destroy. It's true in a lot of movies, too. Like, you don't want to see, like, you kill the boss halfway through the... You kill the main villain at the, halfway through the movie and end up, you know, fighting his henchmen the rest of the way. Right? So, um, what happens right before this is Midas uh, recovers with the statue, but at the same time is... Uh, right, bef right before he can cure her, he's surprised and attacked by the pirate. Boss. And so again, now I know this is that <laughs> that's already a lot of red ink, but what we'll expand on in the walkthrough and what you know I know 
because I've been thinking about this story a lot, is that these two are very brief. This one is not, but it's the very end of the game. The player's usually pretty okay with putting the controller down and, and seeing what the, you know, the end of the game is. Um, what, has to, what, what happens right before Midas is ambush by the boss, and they go into this boss fight, right? That precedes the very end of the game. <clears throat> um, Midas and what his, his loyal henchman is a guy I'm going to call Cadmus. And he's going to be a character, an NPC, that follows along with Midas throughout almost the entire game. And he'll serve two purposes. He'll be kind of my narrative agent. He'll help the player. <laughs> and that's his job. It's somewhat organic because Cadmus's job is basically he's this guy's, you know, somewhat, on the surface he seems maybe somewhat simple, but he's really, he's, he's really smarter than he appears, got a good heart. And he sees King Midas as kind of a father figure. figure. He's one of the few that's really stuck it out with King Midas. King Midas doesn't see that because he's so obsessed and, 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 and immersed in his, his shame and self-pity and guilt. But um, King Midas and Cadmus, when they get to the end of their adventure, they're going to end up on, on some little tiny island, like uninhabited island. And and uh, they're gonna get the, they're gonna end up there with a statue, and then it's this pirate uh, captain who ambushes them there. Okay. As I said, I had a chance to think about this a little bit, and I'll make this clear. But uh, bear with me for the moment. What happens right before this is that, and I'm gonna use I'm gonna make mark this down in orange as sort of an exploratory piece of gameplay. But it's really about Midas bringing the stat Midas bringing the statue to a safe place where he can turn it back, turn the gold statue back to his daughter. But he needs a safe place to do it. So he uh, he and I'll explain. Like I said, I'll explain a little bit. But he and Cadmus are actually. Uh, underwater in the ocean and uh they can breathe right from, at this point in the game they can breathe underwater they, they're not affected by the pressure or the cold it's magic we'll go into detail in a second but the gold statue uh they want to carry it to a safe place they don't want to he doesn't want to turn his daughter back to a human being underneath the ocean he so he finds this little island to do it in and so this exploration is about finding Finding a safe place to do that in. Okay. So we can keep doing this as long as it makes sense and as long as it's comfortable and using our treatment as a guide, you know, as a map of sorts. We can keep going backwards from the end of the game, really all the way to the beginning. What I think happens in practice is you jump around, you jump around some. You, uh, I think it's, it's a, it makes a lot of sense to start at the end. And then maybe at some point you start getting to the middle and maybe get a little stuck and then you want to, well, let's jump to the beginning, right? We're making, it's like a, like a puzzle. You know what's... What it's also like, and this is very kind of cheesy. I know this is cheesy, but I like to think of as I like to think of this as like your palette, right? I mean, it's kind of like that. You got the different colors, but but you know, it's like the narrative designer's palette, right? I what do I got? I got cinemas. I got interactive uh, dialogues with NPCs. I got. Uh, Specific, you know, sort of important uh, places where you got to explore and find things to move the story forward. I have puzzles. I have first-person shooting. And maybe I have more. Like, I'm keeping it simple. 
keeping this example simple. So you're then you're sort of you're you're, you're flow charting out the game, but it's kind of like you're you're figuring out a puzzle or making a painting. I, I don't know. It's fun. So let's jump to the beginning, okay? And then the ending will start to make sense to you. Like I said, I've had a chance to think about it. I'm a little bit ahead of you with this game. You saw the other side of this. I've got it. I already have it all float charted out. But the very beginning of the game. Well, it's pretty simple. We're gonna start with an opening cinema. It's the it's it's the opening cinema. It's gonna I think quickly and without a lot of dialogue establish uh, King Midas, and that he's at the he's in in in, in ill health. But he's obsessed with curing his daughter before he dies. And so we're going to have, uh, you know, an opening cinema. That establishes, you know, our, uh, establishes King Midas and his sort of, uh, Cadmus, one of his really last few remaining loyal subjects. Now, of course, every game we got to teach the player, you know, teach the player about our feature set and our gameplay. So we have this opening cinema where we establish, you know, what's going on. King Minus at the end of his life, desperate to cure his daughter. And we establish that he's got people out there looking all over for um, Dionysus, the Greek uh, god of partying and wine and uh, yacht rock and all that stuff, uh, who gave King Midas his golden touch. He's got people all looking for him all over because uh, he's he wants he wants Dionysus to give him the power to reverse this Midas touch. Okay, and he can still turn things into gold. So I'm going to have an interaction, some interaction with Cadmus where Cadmus is basically going to tell him, it's going to take the pressure off the opening cinema a little bit, but he basically is going to tell him, look, the, the scouts and the spies that you have around central Turkey or Greece, whatever, uh, we need, we, we got to pay them some more money. They need want more, they want more money. They say they're looking we, we need more money, so you need to turn some things into gold. I know this is your least favorite thing in the world to do at this point. But if you want to cure your daughter before you die, we got to do it. So now we're going to teach the player how to shoot, essentially. How to, how to blast things using energy beams or orbs or something from his hand. The artist will figure it out, make it look cool. So it's, so it's our tutorial, but it also is... Pretty well integrated into the into the story here. We need, we need to change some things into gold, so we can pay your scouts. Okay. So you've got you know Cadmus telling you stuff, and at the same time. Uh, actually, let's do this here. Excuse me. I've got my opening cinema, and then I've got this interaction with Cadmus, which is basically a first-person shooter type tutorial because we need money to pay our scouts and our spies, that kind of thing. The the blue and the green box there, the, the sort of interaction with Cadmus, and then the, the, the actual shooting in green, they're stacked up top of each other because they'll kind of be intertwined, right? You, you, you've played tutorials before. You know what they're like. They sort of happen concurrently. And we're just noting that by stacking them on top of each other. 
opening cinema first, then those two things somewhat concurrently. But then what? What happens next? Um, well, as luck would have it, King Minus has been waiting for this for years and years and years and years. It'd be a pretty boring game, too, if we didn't, uh, if we didn't get the ball rolling. So, <laughs> so this story starts shortly before King Midas um, is told by one of these scouts that at last Dionysus has been spotted not terribly far from King Midas's castle. So... <clears throat> Gonna make that kind of an interactive conversation. You know, we get to do some shooting, and then you can talk with the scout. Maybe he wants a little money before he'll he'll cough over the information. <laughs> Maybe he'll want a lot of money. <laughs> you know, conflict is of course the key to drama or humor. He's not gonna just show up and say, "Here's your information, sir." He's you know want a little a little extra. Uh, that extra that Midas touch. <laughs> Maybe Midas just gives it to him. Maybe Midas says, you know what? Just tell me what you know, and I won't turn you into a statue. Right? But we'll worry about that later. Um, the point is, the moment he's been waiting for ever since he turned his daughter into a gold statue, he's here. Dionysus has been spotted. And I'm going to say that Dionysus has been spotted at, at one of his uh, own temples, a temple to, to him. Not terribly far. So, what does he, I mean, what does Midas and Cadmus do? Without any hesitation, they immediately head off there. Just, you know, immediately, right? But as they do, okay, as they head out, They're going to be set upon, I think, by um, bandits, brigands, that kind of thing. It's probably pretty well known, in, in at least in this little area, that King Midas is still Mr. Moneybags. And, I don't know, maybe they want to capture him and force, stick him in a cage and make him turn things to gold all day for their, you know, so they can get rich. Maybe they think that if they cut off his hands, they'll have the Midas touch. <laughs> right? So... It's dangerous for Midas to be out here, but he doesn't care. He's, he's got a shot at Dionysus, so who knows how long Dionysus will be around. So, um, Oops, almost used the wrong color. Color coding is important. It just gives you this, this at a glance, you can just kind of see both the, the, the mix, the general mix of your feature sets, how I did the gameplay versus cinema versus other things, but, and then, but also the pacing. Right. So far, so good. We haven't really done any puzzles, but that's that's coming soon. So he's got to fight. He's got to fight. Now, eventually, with the exploring and the fighting and the fighting and the exploring, the player will. You know, the player's task with finding this temple, and eventually they'll find it. We're not going to make it too hard. And I want to have, again, a brief, this is brief. This is real brief, but um, the temple's found, and I want, I want you know, to pause for a minute, give the player a real good look at this temple, especially because... 
this temple is going to be just kind of fallen into disrepair. I like the idea that 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 you know King Midas is old and at the end of his life, and his castle's just fallen to hell because he could care less at this point. Even though he's got money, he doesn't care about anything else. And I kind of let, kind of like this being sort of this transition, like the, this feeling that the old gods and the old kings are are on you know death's door. It's time for something new. Maybe nobody knows what, but even Dionysus maybe feels this a little bit. And so this temple's just fallen to hell, so it's going to be, even getting into the temple is going to be a little bit of a chore. And now we can have our puzzle tutorial. We can teach the player about our sort of physics, environmental puzzles, and how maybe changing things into gold might even uh, play into this into these puzzles, right? Changing a material from one thing to another. Make it stronger, lighter, uh, heavier than what it used to be. Okay? So it's kind of same as earlier. We're getting a bit of a you know a sneaky tutorial from Cadmus, and we're also asked to solve a puzzle to get into this temple that's just fallen to hell. So it's you can't just walk through the door. You, you gotta find another way. There's been a landslide or something. We'll figure it out later. And maybe the artist is in the room with you, and they're already coming up with ideas. And and the game designer in charge of puzzles is hopefully in the room, and you can. Put all that on them. Um, <clears throat> once inside, you need to find dialysis. And you'll find the guy. Now, I like, I mean, personally, I enjoy working on games or kind of light hearted sometimes even just even comedic not every game needs to be like that but but you know it's my game <laughs> so i picture this whole thing as being kind of comedic i also and this isn't really relevant but i lo would love the idea of doing an art style in the vein of uh like the golden voyage of sinbad and i can totally forgive you uh for not knowing what that is but um when I was a kid, they would show these movies all the time. You know, there was before cable, and they would show uh, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad and some of these other Sinbad movies made by the same folks. And it was um, the monsters and stuff in them were this um, made from this. Well, it was either like an iguana that they would <laughs> make, you know, film so it looked giant. Or they would be these uh, the stop and go animation using models created by Ray Harryhausen. And if you really, even if you didn't watch uh, movies with his, uh, even like Clash of the Titans and things with his um, work, you might know who he is if you're really into just you know visual effects and that history of that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, and apparently he worked on the story too. I, I looked this up. Um, he helped produce it and, and all that stuff. But I love the idea of just doing kind of an art style that's kind of an homage to that. But in, anyway, anyway. So I bring that up, the, I bring up that stuff because I, I always kind of imagined, for whatever reason in this game, Dionysus to be somewhat like Guy Fieri. Apparently, Guy Fieri, <laughs> once I read an interview, he got into a physical altercation, altercation with one of his best friends, his hairdresser, <laughs> which happens. I'm not poking fun of, of Guy Fieri or, or the guy, but it, it was just kind of a funny thing. And I just thought, oh, okay, you know, Dionysus, God of wine and revelry. And I don't know, you know, could be Guy Fieri could be funny. And, you know, it would be funny though to meet Dionysus 
and to see that he is really that he to find him and see he's really distraught. He's just on the surface he's distraught because he's had a falling out with his hairdresser. And it's that was funny. But it's also it's again I like they said you have this crumbling temple. He goes to this temple maybe for like an ego boost. It's all under the surface. Probably doesn't need to know all this, but he goes to this temple for like an ego boost, and the, there's no worshippers there. The temple's just fallen to disrepair. It's it's been abandoned, right? And and so he's just you know had the opposite effect. So you fall. Still recording. I'm still recording. Okay. <clears throat> so you find and talk to Dionysus and you find out that he's deeply, you know, on the surface he's deeply upset. Maybe he's crying because he's gotten into a fight with his hairdresser. Maybe he does refer to him as a hairdresser. It's just Dionysus is, you know, right-hand guy, his best bud. Um, I've gotten into a fight. <laughs> so um, now you got to go and find his, Dionysus' his buddy. This is hairdresser, right? This stupid thing. Ah, come on, get out of here. You gotta explore the temple some more. And we could have some more puzzles and things. I, they could be very small, I imagine. I imagine even in exploration there are, again, it's somewhat broad strokes still. We'll do a walkthrough that's in more detail. And then as the game gets built, you know, that's when, when everyone's using their creativity to, to, to help tell the story. See, when everyone understands what's going on, then everyone can be a storyteller. Oh, the artist, the audio people. The voice actors, the gameplay programmers, the people who are local and translating your dialogue for other cultures, if they understand the story. I mean, everyone now can be mostly on the same page. Okay? So even when we're exploring, there might be little bits of interaction, even tiny bits of combat. But but the, the goal here to move the story forward is to find Dionysus' hairdresser. And then you find that guy. Um, so I was thinking that not only is he distraught, but maybe he's wandered into a part of the temple that, um, is kind of dangerous and maybe he's trapped, maybe even hurt. So you gotta, gotta free him. And that's a puzzle. Um, and it is rescuing the hairdresser so that the two can reunite Dionysus and his best friend, his buddy, his drinking buddy, his wingman, and, the, and his hairdresser. And you can reunite them. 
um, which is uh, a big deal, okay? Because when you first uh, if, 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 when you first go, uh, go and find Diana says he's going to want nothing to do with giving you any any new power. He's either too distraught, or he wants you to he wants you to help reconcile and patch things up, uh, or both. You know he's not going to make it easy. Nothing's going nothing's nothing can be easy, right? <clears throat> And I think that's a cinema, because it's real important. It's when Donis just says, oh, Donis, I think, I imagine him being hugely grateful. And I, I imagine him being hugely grateful, and obviously he gives Donis the power. He says, okay, you can keep the, you're going to keep the Midas touch, but I will also give you the power to reverse it. And so that's a big moment, and, and I think we'll just use a cinema for that. Maybe we don't have to, but... Um, now, the player, King Midas, the player, has just been granted a new power to reverse the Midas touch. So, I want to say that uh, even though they were able to get into this temple, that maybe something happens, you know. Maybe, maybe I, I think that when they rescue the hairdresser, they, they, they have to uh, disrupt some things. And that, that blocks off uh, the entrance they used. You know, you know how you put her around the house, you fix one thing, but you break something else. That's, that's always the way, right? But so I want the, you know, another sort of puzzle for the, the player because we're going to teach them how the, 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 the reverse Midas touch can also play into, into puzzles, right? I can change, so, so water, flowing water. I can change it to a solid gold. Walk across it, then I could change it back to water. So you know, the game designer, if you have one who's in charge of puzzles, should be getting all excited about all the different possibilities, right? That's that's their job, and we'll leave it to them. But but, it's got to be here, right? So, as per our established pattern. So, a little bit of tutorial, because again, it's the first time we've gotten this new power. Okay. But, they're anxious, obviously, to get right back to the castle. He's got the cure, and King Midas is in ill health. He is at the end of his life, but he feels, you know, a surge of life and adrenaline and determination. He's, he's not... Uh, He, he, he's, he, you know, he, he feels this is this is the moment he's waiting for for who knows decades, right? He is um, so excited. So when they get out of this temple, it's full speed for home. But of course, you know it's still a dangerous area, right? So, we, we found the temple. We don't have to worry too much about noting what explore, exploration happens here. They, they, they know where they, where they are. They know where the castle is. He wants to get back immediately. And, um, but there's still these, you know, brigands and thieves. And maybe they regrouped. Maybe they were the first 
time he fought them, he really pissed them off. They went and got reinforcements. And uh, you got to do some more fighting. Then, though, however, eventually you get back to the castle. And Midas will discover... Dun, dun, dun. The gold statue of his daughter has been stolen. He left it unprotected. He vamoosed. Took him some time. He's at the end of his life. He finally has the cure. She's gone. That's a big moment. I'm, I'm going to use the red. That's a cinema. Let me do one thing real quick, and then I am going to finish this video. We'll do a part two, and I think that'll probably, we'll probably get this done in two parts, but I won't commit. Uh, this might seem unnecessary, but let me, let me do this to help illustrate a little more clearly even what we're doing, okay? Again, it's a flow chart. Color coded. Color coded flow chart. And we're stopping here. We've got we, we're working from the end, kind of back towards the beginning. Then we stopped, started the beginning, started working forward. And there's a lot left in here. So what I'm gonna do though the next video is we're gonna I'm gonna show you the final product. I could keep going and show you step by step by step, but I think I'll, I'll it'll at this point hopefully you sort of get what I'm I'm doing here. So I'm going to show you the whole finished product, and then we'll kind of go we'll we'll go through it. All right, okay, Whew. you earned it. This is a long video. Hopefully it uploads to YouTube. But <laughs> so yeah, take a break. Have, make yourself uh, some dinner. Get a refreshment, something, and uh, when you're ready, we'll pick back up. And uh, and uh, like I said, this is fun. This is exciting. You're doing a great job. You are, and you're uh, you're almost home free. We're gonna finish this. Talk about the walkthrough dialogue. I don't have too much to say. And then we'll get into how you're going to take an idea like this uh, and a flow chart like this and, a, and your walk through and make an actual game all by yourself. No help needed so you can build a portfolio, maybe get a job in games. It's going to happen. Uh, I can't guarantee it's going to happen, but I'm, I'm here to help to try to make it happen. All right. See you soon.